Hey, well, what's up, guys? Welcome back to The Collision. Daniel here to talk about the new exciting movie from Angel Studios, Bonhoeffer, Pastor, Spy, Assassin. I have seen it, so let's talk about it. So not many historical figures warrant both the words pastor and assassin in the title of their biopic. Uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer is just a fascinating character of history. I think one that does seem ripe for a, a cinematic portrayal. And I think Angel Studios proves to be the perfect home for the telling of his story, uh, balancing technical excellence with a faithfulness to the very rich theological underpinnings of his legacy. Because I'm happy to let you know that Bonhoeffer is great. Uh, this is a really good movie. I think this is a beautifully made compellingly told, and just a timely story that I think will challenge and inspire viewers in equal measure. But before getting into the review, uh, just let you know that I did have the opportunity to chat with producer John Scanlon about this film, and I just think it's a really good, interesting conversation, so I encourage you guys to check that out, and I'll link the video below. As far as its like storytelling approach, Bonhoeffer is perhaps you know closely comparable to Christopher Nolan's Academy Award winning film Oppenheimer. I think both films are a dialogue driven World War II dramas that offer a very like, compelling character study of a man who's just wrestling with his like moral responsibility to act amid very challenging cultural circumstances. And I think like Oppenheimer, this film also balances like two different timelines, using flashbacks to Bonhoeffer's early life to paint a very like, effective portrait of just sort of how his courageous faith was forged through the fires of just opposition and adversity. And just given like the track record of Hollywood, I think viewers may be justified in assuming that Assassin would be the title descriptor that is given the most attention in this film, you know, with Bonhoeffer's backstory and religious faith merely just like the preamble for the famed assassination attempt on the life of Adolf Hitler. And that pivotal event is indeed depicted in this film, although Bonhoeffer centers primarily on his identity as a pastor. And like the external thread of the rise of you know Nazism in Germany is an ever-present backdrop to the narrative, and I think the film does do like a masterful job in showing how the country and also the church kind of slowly became entrapped by that evil ideology, but I think the film's most compelling narrative tension actually results from more like internal conflict as Bonhoeffer wrestles with the very complicated moral and spiritual dilemmas kind of in response to those cultural circumstances. And films that do like heavily rely on dialogue can at times be, you know, kind of devolve into just an endless slog of weighty conversations. And there may be some moments in this film where viewers do grow just a little bit restless for the story to, you know, advance forward with just a little bit more urgency. And I think at times sort of the alternating timelines can maybe stall momentum at least a little bit. Uh, but I think Bonhoeffer remains captivating by keeping sort of the conflict firmly rooted in, you know, Bonhoeffer as a character. Kind of like the theological debates are not just like, you know, philosophical constructs, but are deeply rooted in kind of the personal and like consequential for Bonhoeffer as a person. And actor Jonas Dastler, I think, does a commendable job in the lead role as Diedrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, he is charming, he is heroic, but I think he also showcases just enough like vulnerability and like human weakness to prevent this film from becoming like a mere hagiography of just like a perfect saint. I think this is a movie that does deal with some like thorny and like morally complex issues, and the filmmakers seem willing to leave those questions open-ended, kind of telling the story from the perspective of a man rooted in the, kind of that uncertain middle of the historical moment, rather from like the more like, omnipresent vantage point of storytellers living decades later. And despite like the heavy emphasis on the dialogue, the film does not neglect like, the importance of the visuals, because uh, this film looks incredible. Uh, the cinematography was done by uh, John Matheson, who you might know from you know his work on a like, Gladiator or the comic book movie uh, Logan. And I think like, the level of just technical excellence just elevates this film kind of beyond, I think, much of what is produced by mainstream Hollywood today, and certainly far beyond sort of the standard quality of most faith-based films. Because the film was filmed on location in, I think, Belgium and also in Ireland, and it does have an almost like painting-like quality to the visuals. I think a, a beauty that feels very like picturesque and cinematic, but also very like tactile and authentic. As far as content to consider, things going on on the surface of this, uh, really not a whole lot at all. As far as language, there is several kind of minor profanities, I think maybe three to four, as well as some like kind of racial slurs and pejorative language that is used. For violence, um, very little that is actually shown like on screen. You do see at one moment some like skulls and some bones that are visible, you know, among the ruins of war. And there is a man that is like, ultimately hanged, although the screen cuts before depicting the actual act. Sexuality, no sexuality. Uh, the only other kind of content stuff is just there are um, kind of frequently throughout the film you see characters that are you know smoking cigarettes or drinking alcohol 
As far as themes, worldview, things going on beneath the surface of this film, really the main thing all throughout this is sort of that tension between faith and action. Uh, in the Bible, the apostle James wrote, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And I think really that kind of the interplay between those two elements of Christianity, faith and works, is the essence of sort of Bonhoeffer's own spiritual journey. And the film depicts his like very formative experience as a young seminary student living in Harlem and kind of where he discovered a very deep and authentic spirituality within the black church, only to then return to Germany and find a church that has completely lost its way, consumed by just political or unbiblical ideologies and kind of revering, you know, Adolf Hitler more than God. And he has a great quote in this where he says, the church has become religion without Christ, but what we need is Christ without religion. And the movie just demonstrate sort of the danger of allowing like, the world into the church and just the importance for Christians to speak boldly even when doing so is unpopular and costly. And obviously like, in our own kind of present cultural moment where the lines between politics and the church have also become very increasingly uh, blurred. I think Bonhoeffer as a man, as a movie, does serve as like, a word of caution. Uh, that, you know, a church that trusts in just the actions of man more than the person of Jesus is a very empty religion without power. But of course Bonhoeffer, he's a complicated guy and kind of on the other hand, he ultimately did become politically active both as a spy and as an assassin and was compelled to act against you know the evil of his day and kind of in a conversation with another character at one point he uh, makes a comment he says I can't keep pretending that praying and teaching is enough and kind of later uh, I think in a statement kind of a quote that summarizes his his convictions uh, he says to a group of men says our silence in the face of evil is itself evil not to speak is to speak not to act is to act and very much the idea that a faith that does not compel action is an empty and a self-serving faith. Bonhoeffer was a complex man and the film itself doesn't necessarily attempt to like iron out every moral wrinkle or uh, theological difficulty, but what it does do is just showcase a very imperfect man that is struggling, you know, his whole life with that question. I think as a result, this is a film that can inspire Christian viewers to contemplate kind of what it means in their own lives to have a very, you know, active faith. You know, when does we go too far trying to, you know, enact cultural change within our own power? And then on the other hand, like, when do we allow fear to prevent us from picking up our cross and kind of living out our faith in the real world around us? So in the end, I love this movie. I think this movie is good really from start uh, to finish. I think kind of the template for these sorts of like faith inspired films is no longer a novelty. I think Bonhoeffer is not necessarily doing anything that hasn't been done before, but I think it is operating at like a high level of quality that does push the genre to greater heights. It's a film that understands that it is first and foremost a cinematic experience and not merely a vessel to communicate a sermon on faith. Yet I think it is also a film that has much of value to say. Uh, Bonhoeffer may have been you know, a man of his time thrust into very unique historical circumstances, but his legacy of moral courage and of kind of faith put into action, I think remains as timely as ever. I think in the end, Bonhoeffer is not just a movie about a great Christian man, but it's the powerful story about what it takes to become such a man. But hey, I would love to hear what you think. If you guys have been looking forward to this movie, uh, don't be shy. Jump into the comment section. Let's have a conversation about this. If you have done so too, encourage you guys, become a collider, subscribe to the channel. We've got some other movie reviews. We've got our Faith and Pop Culture podcast. We've got interviews, just other fun stuff. Would love to have you be a part of that. But most of all, guys, thank you for watching. Stay safe and continue to collide with your world for Christ.